Welcome to Dude RV. Hey, I really appreciate you stopping by. Today, I find myself at Tugaloo State Park. I've been traveling around. We actually went from Texas to North Carolina and now we're on our way back. And today I find myself at Tugaloo State Park. Little Red is still out of, out of sorts. So I've got white lightning and I've got the hood mount. So I'm the, the next four, counting this one, there'll be three more after this. Uh, park campground tours where I'm using white lightning, so I'm not gonna keep talking about it I'm just gonna go do it. All right, so let's go check out Tugaloo State Park now I have the camera set up mounted on the hood with the with the really cool Tripod suction cup foot tripod set up. So we're rolling now Heading into Tugaloo State Park and you must be warned I got two speed bumps here that if you're in a motorhome with a, a hydraulic leveling system, your jacks, if you go across it too fast, your jacks will bounce. So be careful. The first thing we're gonna visit is the new boat ramp facility. I don't know how new it is, but I can tell you it's newer than anything else in Tugaloo State Park. And it's really, a nice four lane boat ramp. And this is a boater's haven. I'm telling you that yesterday, there were more boats on this lake than, than I could keep count of. Just everywhere, all day. Well, not all day, but the whole time we were here. We got here about on four o'clock, from four o'clock to sunset. It was non-stop boat motors. Courtesy dock, nice big courtesy dock. Boat ramp is actually a four laner. And there are several handicapped parking spaces for both just cars and boat or pickups with boat trailers. A very spacious parking area up above. Tugaloo State Park is not too far off of your I-85 corridor running north and south. It is on Hartwell Lake, right on the state line of Georgia and South Carolina. So if you're moving north or south on 85 and you're looking for a place to stop for the night or a couple of days before or after Atlanta, because we're just north of Atlanta, I'm gonna break the law here. Breaking the law, breaking the law, going the wrong way just to show you how big this parking lot really is. And also I want to give you an epic view of Hartwell Lake. Or Lake Hartwell, whichever comes first, the lake or the Hartwell. There it is. It's probably the best, best viewpoint you're gonna get of Lake Hartwell from Tugaloo State Park. Uh, there's a lot of things I like about Tugaloo State Park, and there are some things as an RVer I'm not just real crazy about. And as we get into the RV camping area, we'll go into detail on that. One of the things I like about it is that it re really has a whole lot to offer for everyone. 
not just RVers and tent campers. Now the old boat ramp, or the original boat ramp is down here. And that, that's still usable, and, and some people are still using it. I think it's mainly now used for launching the smaller watercraft. And there's boat trailer parking here. Park, they do offer kayak and canoe rental. Hey, you can rent those at the, at the office. Here is the, the boot ramp. For my boot ramp fans, see, it's just a one laner. I bet that before they built that new one, that probably backed up quite a bit. I have a nice little camp store here. That's where you do your check-in. So we made our reservations online, and when we arrived here yesterday, I didn't feel like messing with checking in. I already paid for the site. Uh, one of the things that I don't like about this park is the, the fee, the camping fee. We have a site basically it's costing us thirty dollars a night and we don't even have we don't have sewer we've got water and electricity but no sewer and usually for that kind of price point we're in a Texas State Park or a COE we're getting we're getting sewer but that's all right they got a really nice dump station no, and I'm, I'm not a full connection site guy anyway. And what I mean by that is, I tip, even if I'm in a full connection site, I typically don't hook up my sewer until I'm ready to dump and then I put it away. All right, one of the things that I find interesting about I started to say Hartwell State Park, but that's a Georgia State Park on the other side of the lake. One of the things I find fascinating about Tugaloo State Park is they have a yurt village. Not just one or two yurts here or there, but they've got a, like seven or eight of them with a parking area and you walk down into the yurt village. It's also where the walk-in tent camping area is. It looks like some at one point somebody had the great idea. Of, okay, go out, come out here and you can park your trailer. I guess it was overwhelmed. Too many trailers. This area of the park looks like it's recently renovated. Uh, I say recently, it's the, the asphalt is newer and the, the facilities just look newer than some of the areas, other areas. Kind of looks like this was done at the same time the boat ramp was constructed. Now on Today's video is sponsored by CampgroundViews.com, the cutting edge technology in trip planning for your RV trip. You want to know what that site's going to look like? They have got you covered with 360 degree views of every campsite.
They currently are focusing on recreation.gov campsites. They have completed all of the West Coast and are in the process of getting all of the East Coast campsites. And then they'll be moving into the Central United States. But they have an early bird special that I'm taking advantage of. And I recommend that you check it out and, and see if it fits with your budget as well. Because this technology is what we RVers have been dying for. We'll be able to see exactly what the sights look like. No surprises when we get there because of those 360 degree views. So my hat's off to campgroundviews.com. The link is in the description below. I encourage you to go check out what they're doing and see if it's right for you. All right, let's go back to what we were doing. The, my experiential video, you can see I can some of these places in a little more detail. I actually walked up to a yurt gave you a really good outside view of that I didn't go inside the yurt and I was really surprised to see that all of the yurts here have uh, mini split AC systems most of the, the yurts I've seen in other campgrounds have no AC at all or they have the little portables that, that have the exhaust hose going outside so you end up with a negative pressure the speed limit in here is 15 miles an hour so some of this footage I'll do in a, a timeline acceleration at least getting us up to the little red speed If you decide to come down here, just know that with the exception of this one yurt right here on the handicap yurt, the rest of them are, are downhill. They've got a smooth path, an asphalt path to get down to them, but this is probably a 7% grade. It's pretty steep. Strange place for a stop sign. This is a this this is a really pretty park. Of course, I know I say that about all of them or most of them. Uh, this one this one is. It's a pretty park, what can I say? It's got lots of beautiful trees. Mix of hardwoods and pines. A lot of, if you look at the Hartwell Lake on Google Earth, you can see that there are a lot of little creek channels and river channels. So there's a lot of fingers that come off of this lake great places to explore in a boat. I didn't bring Bobber with me because we're moving too fast for me to even mess with deploying Bobber. Uh, we're actually going to be here for two nights. It's most of the campgrounds we're visiting, we're just, we're just stopping one night. They're waypoints for us on our journey here and back, there and back. We're traveling about 200 miles a day, 200 to 300, depending on the distance between campgrounds. Now there's a, a primitive camping area, they call it a pioneer camp. I don't, I'm not exactly sure what that is. It's this gravel road here on the right. I, I haven't gone down there simply because uh, it's clearly identified by reservation only and there was a gate 
so I didn't want to push my luck trying to get white lightning down there. It's not like being on a little red where I can sneak in. The next place we're going to visit is the date use area. I have a very cool, very interesting date use area. There's a lot going on down here. There literally is something for just about everybody at the day use area. And I said just about. Covering my base. I saw two deer, a mama and a baby deer, a fawn. This this morning, I guess it was about nine o'clock across the road right here. Oh, in case you're wondering, it is July 6th. It's Tuesday, July 6th, 2021. Well, there's a, a hiking trail, a Muscadine hiking trail that, that circumnavigates the whole park. If you're into tennis, they have two tennis courts for you to go whack your whack, whack some balls, swat some balls. In the day use area over here, there is a miniature golf course, which is right what we're looking at, and then there's a volleyball court and a really nice little beach. There are a number of group pavilions, picnic shelters. So you can come down here with a great big group of folks and have a, have a barbecue. Have a pause in production. Hello. Okay, go we'll plug it in. There's two plugs. Plug into both 30s, but unplug the RV cord first. Or you can just let the generator run, and when I finish doing what I'm doing, I'm about halfway through. If it's not bugging, just let it run. Unless you want to go out there and plug in. But okay, well, I'm, it, it, it's it's not real technical, but don't but don't worry about it. Uh, right. Well, you you when you see what I've I've got it all plugged in the way it needs to be. But the most them. Well, I'm 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 in the middle of a video too, so. No. All right. Bye. All right. Now, back out here on the main road. I've debated whether or not to show both camp cabin loops, but I've decided that, yeah, We'll just accelerate the timeline for non-interesting stuff. But there are cottages, the cabins, two different loops. Now the, the park is on a peninsula, and so we have cabins on both sides of the peninsula. We're currently on the north side of the peninsula, and the cabins are tucked back down into the woods. So that they're very private, you can you really can't see them too much from the road. But there are a couple that we'll be able to see. Oh, 
on a spur road like this one. We'll just run down here and turn around. This will give you perspective. There are several little docks, water access points. around the cabins. Turn around right here. Cottages 18 through 20. Now the access to the lake on this side of the peninsula is, is a bit challenging because it's really steep. The other side of the peninsula it has a, a gentler slope and it's easier to access the lake. As you can see, that's, that's a pretty steep bank to get down right there. But you're back up in the woods and only one neighbor that you can see because you can't see the next, but the, the next one over. Now we're gonna run over, go back to the other side of the peninsula and take a look at, if I were gonna stay in a, in a cabin, a cottage, at Tugaloo State Park, this, that's where I would, this next place is where I would be staying. Here. I'm certain of it. And I also saw deer on this road as well. These cabins are a little bit closer together and they don't seem to be as spacious as the other side. But what I like about them is it's really lake access here is really easy. 
I'll give you a perspective on that. Right here. Okay. Okay. Bye. All right. Now we're going to move on. Into the RV camping loop. Get out of here first. But I like these cabins over here better. They're a little closer together. They're not quite as private, but I really like having the, the, the lower grade of slope. It's just easier to get down to the water. That's what I'm trying to say. low-hanging branches here especially in the RV loops which is you'd think that they would be trimming those trees back maybe they do and the, and the trees just grow that fast Campsite one through twenty-six. There, are, there are loops in the loops here at Tugwell. Not Tugwell. Here in this state park, there are loops within loops. Whoop, got to bag out. All right. Several of these, most of these are little pull through sites. And one super isolated private back end site. Tugaloo State Park has some really awesome lakeside sites. So we're actually going to do a double double loop around here because it's a double loop. We'll do the outside first and then come back and do the inside. Site number two is just in. I would love site number two. Knowing what I know now. Word out of state, when I come back to Tugaloo State Park, I'm gonna try to get site number two. Five is nice. Mm. 
Nine is, I mean, eight is pretty good. It's a back end, it's not a pull through. Now that I'm aware of, they have no full connection sites in Tugaloo State Park. And at least where we're set up, and I think this is throughout the park, but most of us, all of the sites have two 30 amp plugs and one 20 amp plug. There's no 50 amps. So it is advisable to bring a wire, a combiner, so that you can combine two 30s if, if you have a 50 amp RV and you want to run your air, both your air conditioners and your microwave, then you need to bring a combiner. Now I didn't have one of those. And they, they were out at the camp store. So I ended up running into you know, the, the closest Walmart. Someone told me that, yeah, Walmart sells the, the, the Ys. I get into the, wall, the closest Walmart and they did not have any. And actually their RV section was pr pretty well depleted. But wouldn't you know that Mike Jones Ford, which is kind of right next to the Walmart, uh, they are a Winnebago dealer. And they have everything you need for your, if you're needing a part for your RV, that's not brand specific, they probably have it. They actually had the, the combiners, the Ys, and every other RV fitting that you might possibly need. But they don't show up on Google Maps. If so if you're searching for RV accessories, RV parts, they're not gonna show up. And it was just on a whim, after leaving Walmart, I saw that at Winnebago dealership sign and they had some RVs sitting in the parking lot. I thought, well, I'll, I'll just go in there and see if they can point me in the right direction. And sure enough, they had exactly what I needed. It is, and it's actually a progressive product. Which I'm a big fan of progressive. They, they, my surge protector is, is a, is a progressive product. So we're going down to the boat ramp here. The, another boat ramp. Now this is a one laner. And it's kind of kind of tight. But there is a courtesy dock. And if you don't need a whole lot, I mean if you're not bringing a great big old cigarette boat down here, then that's probably just enough room. Moving on. They have a lot of RV spaces crammed into a little bit of dirt here at Tugaloo State Park. So we're going to go through 98 and 105. There's actually three parallel streets here that we're going to have to navigate. And these streets are tight, very tight. The kids have been playing on that playground pretty well non-stop since we arrived. And also, if you have a long trailer, be advised that there's a lot of tail dragging going on right there on that road coming out.
on their golf cart. And there are a lot of golf carts in Tugaloo State Park. There are more golf carts here than I have seen at any other public campground. And that seems to be a recreational activity here to dress up your golf cart and ride around. There were three roads parallel, but there's actually four, so we're going to have one more to do, but we're going to cruise a different loop before we get to that. You can see most of those sites from here anyway. There's the second one down, the second tier down. this time so it's 27 through 46 We're getting close to the end here. Campsite 47 through 56. Some of these campsites are like right on the water, like that one right there. Yes, they got their own dock, their own boardwalk kind of set up. That one right there in 54 is really incredible. Tight turn. Kick back, go by. Sixty two through fifty six. 
there are still a lot of available fights in this campground even though it is June I'm sorry July focusing on what I'm doing even though it's July right after July 4th there's still a lot of availability in Tugaloo State Park lower tier so we're gonna have to do one more loop around I'll accelerate that timeline so y'all don't have to keep seeing that same I'll just jump cut it that way you don't have to keep seeing that same stretch of road from here on to the next turn We know this little stretch of road real well, don't we? We're almost done. through here in Trudy the Super C oh Yappy was very nervous because it's it's just really snug but then she did not feel quite so intimidated when one of our neighbors came in and they were an even bigger Super C well, if they can do it we can surely do it There are actually lakeside sites open. Of course, they'll probably be occupied come this weekend. And there's two, there's three sites up, two sites up on that hill. I thought it was three. I guess not, it's 74 through 76. There's a couple sites up there that overlook us. We're not gonna go up there. last three sites are right up here around this curve and there is Miss Trudy Thunder I guess it's actually four sites I'd encourage you to pay a visit to Tugaloo State Park. It's a good park. With that being said, we're done here. Remember to click on that subscribe button so you won't miss that video in about a week or so. For those of you who have been following along, thank you. I'm so deeply honored, really. That's that's why I, that's why I get to hang out in places like this. Thank you very much for that. And for my patron, you guys rock. Y'all come back now, you hear?